All right, what we're looking at now is we're going to look at another joint member and we're going to look at a bridle. So this member here, in conjunction with a tenon, makes up what we call a bridle joint, which goes like that. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to make this bridle. So what we need to do <coughs> is we need to get some stock and we need to mark it uh, to the width of the material. So how we do that, we get our combination square, put our material like that, drop our combination square down, tighten it up, and it tells me that the material is 50 mil. So what I want to do is I want to mark that on the edge of this material, on the end grain. So I'm going to put the stock against the end grain and I'm just going to mark that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to square that all the way around the material. Nice sharp pencil, we don't need to use a crayon. Alright, in other words a blunt pencil, nice and sharp. Take it all the way around. Like so. And then we end up with that line running all the way around that material. Now, what we need to do is I want to make the bridle, this part here, 10 mil. So I know this material is 35. So you can use a pair of calipers, digital readout if you wish. Or, <coughs> same again, use your combination square. Drop that down like so. Make sure the blade's touching the bench. Turn it up. 35 millimetres. So what we need to do is we've got 35 millimetres on, calculate it, 35 minus 10 equals 25, and then we've got two wings, so 25 divided by 2 equals 12.5. So each one of those is 12.5. So what I need to do, set up the gauge to 12.5. set up to 12.5. What I need to do then <coughs> is I need to gauge the lines from the shoulder, which is this point here, this point here, I need to gauge them up to the end. So what I do is I get the gauge, put the spur on the line, shoulder line, and lightly drag it up, and then harder, harder, and harder. So what I'm doing is I'm slicing the grain. If I did it hard the first time, the spur would just follow the grain. So one, a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder, that's that. And then coming this way, lightly until I get to the shoulder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder. Over on the other side, a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder. Just go to the end there, that's it. And then across your end grain, nice and lightly to start with. Harder, harder, spin it around, lightly, harder, harder. So what we end up with is, <coughs> darken those in for you. We want to take that out, that out, that out, that out, that out, and that out. So the distance, between there and there should be 10 mil. So we open up the ruler, put our ruler in, and there it is there, 10 mil. So what we want to do is when we cut it, we want to cut to this side of the line, this side of the line, because we want to leave that exactly 10 mil in there. If the kerf on the saw we cut on this side, it's going to make the bridle bigger. So what we need to do is we need to cut so the cut is in this side, because this is the waste part we're taking out, which is this part right here. So we'll mark that. This is coming out, this is coming out, this is coming out, this is coming out. So that there stays, and that there stays. But we're taking out, sorry that was not wrong, I'm thinking of a tenon there. 
Let me just change that. Wipe that off. Be confused. All right, we're taking out this center piece, this part here. That's the part we're taking out. So, when I was taught, a pencil line or a chalk line is not a mistake. Once you cut it, it's a mistake. All right, so there we go. So we're going to take that out. So what we do to form this bridle. So we put this in the jaws at 45 degrees, like so, nice and tight. I have these saws custom made. I don't like the tenon saws. So these saws are shrunk for me and they're only about 320 mil long and they've got a very, very stiff back on them. All right. <clears throat> now what we do is we're going to cut on this side of the right hand line. So this being the right hand line to me and the left hand line. So I'm going to go to here and I'm going to start the saw and then I can see when I'm cutting, I'm tracking down and I can see this line down the end grain and I can see this line down this edge. So what I want to do, nice and beautiful. Keep checking. And then what I've done is I've cut it down to that shoulder point. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to pencil, I'm going to do the other side, come in here. Stop. Check it again. Check it again. Check it again. shoulder point. So what I've done is I've cut a diagonal cut in there across to the centre and another one across there. That's what I've done. I'm going to do that now. So that's what it looks like. So in reality that cut has gone to there and then I want to do another one this way across here. So I'm going to put this in here. In the jaws nice and tight. Now I don't have to worry about this top grain because the saw cut's already been made for me. So once again, draw it back slowly on this saw, keeping an eye straight down the back of the saw, straight along that line there. Over to the next one. See so now those two cuts, those two cuts and those two cuts forming this part which I'm the waste material that I'm going to take out. Alright, in reality I've got a cut running that way, and I've got a cut running that way. So by rights I put it in the vice vertically now. And then what I do is I cut straight down and the saw is going to follow its own guide. So we put this in the vice. Nice and tight. Special little block goes in there. Do that tight. What I do is this, as I said, this saw will just sit in here and find its own path. shoulder point which is down to this point here there and there take the next one here Shoulder there and that shoulder there. 
is now to take the bridle out. What we need is a chisel block, which is this little device here. We'll set this up here. Plant this onto the bench. So, another one on the other side. Here. Now what we do, put this here, grab a piece of waste material and this piece of iron, put that there to save it bruising. This then goes over here and tighten this up. And because it's now 10mm, we we'll grab a 10mm chisel. We use the back of the chisel, we don't chisel it this way. So the flat part of the chisel goes on that line exactly where we want the bridle to end and then we tap that and we just check that it's correct we go yep yeah, that's all right check that is exactly 90 degrees and then what we want to do is we want to start removing the waste so that'll come out we'll tap it a bit harder come in again and we're slowly breaking away the waste material. Very important to keep this at 90 degrees. When we get to about halfway, then what we can do you can see what's happening there, the waste is starting to come away. Then we're going to turn it over, put it here again, use my little bruise protector. Put this in. point just there, tap it lightly, make sure that it's correct, that's about there, that's where I want it, put that in there, hold it nice and firm, tap that down and then start taking the waste out. send off and then this will slip into that so let's do that just go over here I'll just take a measurement doesn't matter about that much come around here about that much come around here yeah square it all the way around nice and beautiful and what I'll do is I'll get a bench hook I'll come over here just use that before, make sure there's nothing in my way. Have a look at that. That's what I'm going to cut off. Put that on there, draw back slowly. See that I'm cutting. 
nine square, which is five. done correctly then this bridle here should accept this tenon we'll just give that a little tap put that like that if we glued that together all right nice and flush both sides if we glued that together we'd then get a smoothing plane and what would happen the glue being a water-based glue would swell the um, swell the fiber a little bit and it would just fill up any tenth of a millimeter gap in there and then once it was dry and you planed it that would end up to be a perfect joint so there we have the bridle joint using two members being the tenon and being the bridle itself oh. ah. all right so there we are the bridal joint consists of the tenon and the bridle but the bridle is just a single member of a joint all right so thanks for your time and I will see you on the next joint exercise. Thank you.